What's their name? The Underground Railroad is an American fantasy historical drama streaming limited television series created and directed by Barry Jenkins, based on the novel of the same name by Colson Whitehead. The series premiered on Amazon Prime Video on May 14, 2021. It's another bright day for an interesting episode. Let's utilize it fully. Today we will be discussing why the Underground Railroad series will be an unforgettable series. So make sure you stay till the end of this video. In Barry Jenkins' 10-hour historical fantasy miniseries, Series, the Underground Railroad. Regret is generational, as easily passed down in a family as eye color or hair texture. The Underground Railroad, adapted by the Moonlight director from Colson Whitehead's Pulitzer Prize winning 2016 novel, took place in Adabellum, Georgia. Yet, it'd be a mistake to call the series a slave narrative. There's only pain and suffering in a genre originally constructed to end slavery by explaining the horrors of plantation life to northern white readers. That gaze leaped from literature's pages to dominate contemporary movies movie screens and films like Amistad, 12 Years a Slave, The Birth of a Nation, and Antebellum. Jenkins eliminated that gaze, using slavery as the canvas for a journey towards freedom, and not just from pernicious slave catchers and brutal masters, but from that generational regret. Cora was just 10 years old when her slave mother, Mabel, Sheila Adam, left her, running from their plantation to the north, never to be seen again. That betrayal left a wound in the adult Cora, to some Bedu, and rage festered there. Cora considers her mother a monster, and herself a blight on the world. To complete her journey out of slavery, she had to escape not just the plantation, but the hate that she had latched onto Mabel. She must learn to forgive and to see herself as a whole again. For these reasons, Whitehead and Jenkins, the Underground Railroad isn't a story of dehumanization, but unforgettable rehumanization. As the series begins, the undaunted Caesar, a stunning Aaron Pierre, speaks of escape to Cora. His robust frame and piercing hazel eyes hide several truths. He can read. He knows a way off the plantation. He wants Cora to join him, believing she holds her mother's good luck, but she doesn't consider herself special. Only after a string of horrifying events that make the series premiere the hardest episode to stomach does she accept Caesar's gentle support and escape with him across the Georgia landscape through thick woods and murky swamps. Welcome reminders of Andre Travosky's Ivan's childhood. They perilously travel in search of a station house. When I heard the phrase, the Underground Railroad, as a child, I thought it was a literal locomotive churning under the surface, transporting black people to salvation. Jenkins made that fantasy a reality in this fabled alternate universe. There is a system of smartly dressed porters, dark tunnels, bending rails, and beautified trains, where mystical fairy dust seems to emanate from the locomotive's hard-charging orange glow. Some stations merely operate out of caves, while others are ornately tiled like New York City subway stations. Not every line connects. A terminal can be abandoned or deemed unsafe for travel, usually due to a rise in white racial violence in the area. Before a passenger may board the train, they must provide their testimony for the station master to record, in a ledger not unlike those used to track the sales of slaves at auctions. While other filmmakers mold slave narratives around suffering in order to prove black history's worth, whether through shocking violence violence or jolted screaming that dominate antebellum, Jenkins stands unencumbered. It's not that he's abolishing the white gaze or consciously speaking to a specific black tenor. He tells a human story first, imbuing personhood in Cora's sly smile and Caesar's ardent orations. He knows their inherent importance will flow as naturally as water through a channel to the audience, making their obstacles all the more felt. Either promised land or dystopian hell is how film professor Paula Masood once described black literature's attitudes towards the city. Likewise. The description applies to Cora's journey westward, a southern gothic odyssey partly caused by infamous slave catcher Ridgeway, Joel Edgerton, who failed to track down Mabel and is now desperate to capture Cora. He was accompanied by Homer, Chase W. Dillon, an intelligent black boy dressed in a fine suit and mustard yellow bowler hat. Their friendship mirrors that of Daniel Plainview and H.W. in There Will Be Blood, their business partners, in spite of their age difference. Ridgeway protects Homer from this ghastly landscape, teaching him how to catch slaves. Homer alerts his employer to any oncoming dangers. Jenkins took great pleasure in the added narrative and character range that television allowed. A character like Ridgeway would normally be reduced to appearing as a maniac heel. Instead, Jenkins and his scripting team measure out this villain, filling in the blank spots in Ridgeway's incongruities. For a three-episode stretch, you could almost fool yourself into believing this series solely concerns the slave catcher rather than the way he grinds Cora westward toward escape. But Edgerton is so menacing and captivating, and the young Dylan such a revelation. Who could blame Jenkins for giving them 
screen space. The cast overflows with so much new talent, including the warm, giving Pierre as Caesar and the tender William Jackson Harper, the good place, as Royal, a cowboy and railroad officer drawn to Cora. Brief characters like Ellis, Marcus MJ Gladney Jr., a conductor in training, Grace, Michael Bella Bowman, a Northern Carolina girl hiding in an attic, Jasper, a hymn singing Floridian slave, and Mingo, Chukwudi Iwuji, an upper class former slave living on an Indiana farm, are unforgettable because Jenkins never loses their personhood. They might endure terrible hardships, but they find profound areas of happiness to remain immutable. The scale of the Underground Railroad feels immeasurable. Each state Cora visits exudes a different timbre and tone, from lush to barren, from verdant greens, maroon reds, warm marigolds, and deep hugging blues to choked grays. Each setting teams with extras, creating a collage of costumes that evoke unwritten lifetimes for their wearers. In one unbelievable scene, Cora visits a grand terminal, whereupon black folks of all disparate backgrounds, from the slave draped in field clothes to affluently dressed African Americans coalesce on an otherworldly platform. To capture the detailed saga, Jenkins and cinematographer James Laxton, a longtime collaborator, have pushed their visual acumen. Dynamic shots see the camera craning down from a high vantage point, seamlessly settling into the scene's composition. Celestial light fills the frames, enveloping the people Cora should trust, as though the divine decides our view. Weaving through the show's slave narrative, the southern gothic tension, and the western moods are Nicholas Bridle's levitating score. Jenkins and Bridle are masters at creating tension in quiet scenes, like the Brian Tyree Henry sequence in If Beale Street Could Talk. A similar use of sound seems to lurk around every corner of the Underground Railroad. During Cora and Caesar's run towards the station, or to accompany the refreshing side of a locomotive, the thrill of cicadas rises to thundering levels. Echoes of clanks barreled towards us as if we were in a raucous train tunnel, and soaring strings send us into flight. The vastness of the series means you shouldn't binge the Underground Railroad. It's too narratively, visually, and sonically dense, too meticulously calibrated, too swamped in a syrupy mix of southern dialects to appreciate in one consumption. You'd be better off watching one or two episodes a day, specifically pairing the two-part state named installments like Tennessee in a single setting. In fact, Jenkins is clearly aware of the difficulties attached to watching the heavy subject matter. It's why he concludes each episode with a needle drop, playing Kendrick Lamar, Outcast, and so forth in Lovecraft Country. Creator Misha Green regularly inserted present-day hits like Bitch Better Have My Money into the body of her 1950s stories. But those drops didn't accomplish their desired effect. Instead, they broke the illusion of the period piece. Jenkins, conversely, wants to shatter the fantasy, allowing audiences to leave this world undeterred and return safely to reality in the space of a song. However weighty the miniseries feels. The audience never escapes the rehumanizing message Jenkins imparts. By taking this journey, Cora learns about the ordeals her mother probably confronted. By forgiving her mother, she rehumanizes herself, not unlike the way Chiron recreates a tortured teen as a balanced adult in Moonlight. By showing the joy and laughter, the love and determination mixed with the horrors, Jenkins turns this historical slaves away from being suffering props for white consumption and gives them dignity. In Tusamimbado's resolute, sincere turn as Cora, she fills us with an equally unfair fathomable grace. After enduring the grueling on-screen assault of black characters in Antebellum, Bad Hair, Lovecraft, and them, I wasn't sure I could handle the Underground Railroad, so many others have failed to make slave stories about more than surviving indignity, humiliation, and pain. I feared Jenkins would too, but I felt differently once I finished this mystical, surreal epic. I felt uplifted, unashamed to look this era of history in the eye. Without regret, I cheered, cried, hollered, I opened my arms like the tracks lighting the way to another land, a better land. That's because of Jenkins' care. And, by by the Underground Railroad's conclusion. The final sun-soaked shot filled me with peace that fashions black folks' right to live as to manifest destiny. I was left with one thought. He actually did it. He really did it. Jenkins escaped the cycle of wearing torture stories, locating a tunnel free of the regrettable weight levied by Hollywood's past mistakes. Still wondering why the series will be an unforgettable one? To begin, teachers will benefit from preparing themselves and their students to have difficult conversations about race, racism, and white supremacy after watching the series. An understanding of the slave trade, slavery, and and how it functioned in the United States is essential to be able to sense the number of Africans who were enslaved and the historical legacy of enslavement through Reconstruction, the civil rights movement up to today. Additionally, background knowledge of how lynching and other forms of racial terror were used as enforcement and of slave narratives and the rich literary history of African Americans deepens the reading experience. Most important, incorporating the Underground Railroad allows viewers to bear witness to a counter-narrative of slavery that is not often discussed. As Cora charts her own path, the Underground Railroad reminds us that her her story can be a basis for broader discussions of race, gender, and many other important themes. There you have it all. Thank you for staying till the end of this video. Kindly comment what you think about this series in the comments section. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done that.